Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into this Ian Girati Studio interview at Asian Utility Week 2016. I'm Denise and we have got James Colbert um, from Edge Electrons Australia as well as uh, Richard McKindu um, from Edge Electrons Australia. And um, last night I believe you won the Asian Innovation Award. Congratulations. Thank you, Denise. Thank you very much. Do you want to tell us um, what, what led you to this point and perhaps some of the challenges um, you know, that you had to overcome to be able to get to, you know, to be able to win this award? Okay. <laughs> well, Edge Electrons, uh, we have a, a, a unique technology which regulates the voltage yeah. uh, at the household level. And power quality and increasingly high voltages and fluctuating voltages are a big issue for networks across the world, especially networks where there's a high penetration of solar and renewable. So what our technology does is at the household level, uh, we regulate the voltage into the house so you just get exactly the voltage you need and has several benefits. First of all, it means that you get a nice clean voltage, there's no fluctuation, so it's good for your, your appliances and machinery. Secondly, you only buy the voltage you require, you only buy the kilowatt hours you require. So there's an energy saving in there of between 10 and 15 percent and by saving that kilowatt hours, we also reduce your carbon footprint. So it really addresses cost and reliability and reduction in CO2. So that's what the technology does. And uh, I think the big issue um, for us has been not just about getting the technology, which is great technology, but we have uh, low-cost manufacturing from uh, Flextronics, who's one of our investors, a big global manufacturer. Uh, and we also have uh, I think the judges were liked what we were doing in terms of the customer application of the technology. But what sets you apart perhaps from other innovators in the same space? So at Edge Electrons we've come from a background of both retail energy and power electronics. What we've done is take the insights we get from the customer and we're really focused on delivering on the right segments and a clear value proposition. For example in the Australian market our first product is an e-solar saver focused on those 1.5 million households who've already spent five to ten thousand dollars on solar panels improving that performance by ten percent. What challenges um, did you have to overcome, if any, um, to get to this point? Um, I think for a startup, Getting the right technology is great and refining that technology and there's lots of good technologies around there. But what we've also done is we've, we've brought on board Flextronics, a big global manufacturer, that's lowered our cost down there. So we have great technology, low cost manufacturing, uh, but also as, as James has said, really understanding what the customer needs and, and packaging it in a way the customer can easily understand it and it, dry, and it, and, and it appeals to those customer desires for cost, low carbon and reliability. And I think one of the challenges of startups is that people get seduced by their own technology and spend a lot of time talking about their engineering and technology and losing sight of the fact that it's a customer at the end of the day who has to buy it. Yeah. Um, are there specific challenges that startups and innovators face here in Asia? Are these challenges different from those that are experienced elsewhere in the world? Um, I, think that, I think that the Asian market uh, has real challenges for startup because as James said, we've been in Australia, we've been in Australia uh, driving a product in a competitive market yeah. there. And in that competitive deregulated market in Australia, yeah. every retailer, every solar installer is looking for an edge, a competitive edge, and that's what our product brings to them. Here in an Asian environment, you don't have that competition. You have single monopoly utilities there, and they tend to be much more focused on the engineering side of things rather than the customer solutions. So you don't get that customer driven competitive element that really helps pull through startup businesses in, in, in Australia and the US. Asia is quite a big area, it's a huge region, but are there any specific areas within the region that are super exciting for your company right now? Well, Australia is actually the most exciting area for us right now. Right. The Australian market represents the UK market from a competitive standpoint. 25% of customers in Victoria change retailers every year. We've got the highest penetration of solar in the world per capita, sitting at 25% to 47% in some cities. 
Additionally, you've got integrated and regulated markets, much like the non-competitive US markets and some of the Europeans. So for us, Australia is the opportunity to build the use cases which have the applications in those other global markets. Equally, the technology there includes smart grids in Victoria, so we can use it as a partnership channel into other Asian markets as well. Right. So it's a really exciting place. We're seeing a lot of innovation. I think, I think also that here in, in Asia, um, those three issues of cost and carbon and reliability, reliability is a real challenge in these growing economies. And so bringing in technology that can regulate voltage and take away voltage fluctuations and improve the power quality for businesses and, and residents, residential homes is, is important as well. So um, it is a, it's a big market, it's a daunting market for us and really in Asia the key is to, to get the right distribution partners in Asia. We're a small startup business. It's a big challenge for us to come to Asia with all the, 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 the huge markets here. So really we're, we're here looking for, for, for technology partners, for distribution partners yeah. in Asia. Yeah, certainly many opportunities. Um, what trends um, really excite you in Asia at the moment uh, that, that your company is wanting to get its hands on? Um, I think in, in Asia we haven't seen as much growth in solar uh, that we've seen elsewhere. In, in, in Victoria, and, uh, or sorry, in Australia, you have huge penetration, the highest penetration in the world of, of solar, domestic solar. Yeah. We haven't seen that in Asia yet. And I think that's gonna be a huge market here. So domestic solar, and storage is a is, is is going to come to Asia and it's going to be massive and we really want to be part of that uh, that solar revolution here in, in Asia. Sure. All right. Uh, my last um, two questions, I suppose. Um, let's let's get back to the innovator startup side. Um, what would be your advice to innovators, startups coming to Asia? I think the first thing is be very clear on what your customer value proposition is and who your customer is and what their buy cycle is. Be very clear on what your products are and prioritise those against the insights you've developed on the markets you're focused on. Yeah. It's very easy to get caught up in pilots, proof of concepts and suddenly you've burned two or three years with yes, a potential utility with 10, 20, 30, 40 million customers, but you haven't actually done anything more than proven some technology. So it's, it's about what is the problem you're trying to solve for that customer and their end customer and how is the engagement process in their cycle? Yeah, I think that's right. I think that one of the challenges with startups and innovators is they fall in love with the technology. We all fall in love with our technology because we all think it's the best technology. Of course. But we mustn't lose sight of what the customer wants at the end of the day. So having the ability to pivot and to be flexible and respond to what the customer and the market needs I think is absolutely critical uh, for success in, 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 uh, in startup companies. Okay, and then my very last question would be what is your advice to utilities when it comes to accepting and embracing innovation? I think um, it's a real challenge. You've, you need to have a culture and you need to have, give people free reign. The energy sector has got a lot of really smart, exciting people and it's that ability for them to execute on their ideas and a little bit of freedom to let your bright people work with startups and take some risks. It's, yeah. you know, if you're a very large company, you can afford a couple of trial, learn and let them, let them have some fun. Be prepared to take a little risk because the rewards are huge and if you miss out on that, you're not just missing out for your company, your customers are missing out as well, but it really needs people to take a little bit more risk uh, and, the, and the rewards will be huge. Great, sound advice. Gentlemen, thank you so much for for coming in and congratulations yet again on your award. Enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you, Denise. And um, to our viewers, thank you so much for tuning into the session. Uh, if you're wanting some more insight into Asian Utility Week, please have a look at our playlist on ngrati.com. Thank you.